What is up guys, Zach in here, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you the top seven hottest lists for 2024. That is right, I'm gonna be sharing with you right now today, the seven lists that you need to do right now that are gonna have the hottest motivated sellers, the most motivation, and the best chance, let's say if you pull 100 of these single lists to get one deal, this is going to be the best shot of you getting a deal because it is the hottest, most motivated lists for 2024. So no regular list that any Joe Schmo can pull, right? This is going to be a list that is going to be hot. There's going to be a ton of motivation. This is going to be something your guru is probably not telling you about. That's actually going to land you a bunch of wholesaling real estate deals so you can get rich and make a ton of money in wholesaling real estate. I'm going to share these seven right now with you so you can know exactly how to talk to motivated sellers, do wholesaling deals, and get rich wholesaling houses. And so I'm... For a second. All righty. Now we're back on there. We had a little, little issue there for a second, but we're all good. So uh, let's talk about this. Let's break it all down. And let's talk about the top seven lists you need to be doing. Now, before I kind of get into my top seven lists, I do need to give you guys a little warning, uh, if that makes sense, right? These are lists that work. These are lists that are actually going to make you money in wholesaling real estate. But there is one big flaw with these type of lists. If you don't know how to pull them, you're not going to be able to make any money with them, right? And what I mean by this is, yes, there's a lot of wholesalers out here that they know how to pull a certain list or they know of the list, but they don't know exactly how to pull it the right way in their own county or city or heck, even from a paid service. Uh, so I do recommend everyone before we kind of share this all, just go to my free wholesaling course, freewholesaling.com because any single type of list imaginable is already in that course. That is free, free, by the way, which I can show you how to wholesale absolutely for free. So let's get into some of these hottest lists so you can start getting some money and some wholesaling real estate deals. And, and so... The first list we got to talk about, you know, I'm going from seven to one in particular order, you know, if personally for me, which ones are going to be working best for you? Which ones am I going to recommend, right? Number seven here is going to be a list that not a lot of wholesalers are doing. And it pains me. It, it's very sad to me that wholesalers don't do this, but this is going to be the digital bandit signs. I absolutely love digital bandit signs. Digital bandit signs, guys, they are bandit signs you put out on the internet online and they actually get you wholesaling real estate deals you can go to craigslist you can go out here on facebook groups and find them and you can just go post on these groups and finding people that want to sell the property these are inbound leads uh, i know we've kind of had a big talk the other day about inbound versus outbound leads but having leads that you can just send out there to craigslist and facebook and them coming inbound is going to be massively important now number six here now th this is one that i, I talk about a lot but I don't think a lot of people really grasp the concept of this. And these are going to be really any stacked paid list. And what I mean by this is, do you guys need to be stacking lists? And the one big thing I found this year in wholesaling is going back to what was working when I was first starting 2016, 17, 18, right? Back in the, back in the old days, the good old days, right? The stuff that was working back then that was kind of hot. That kind of the, the gurus didn't want to push because they couldn't sell anything on it. It's making a comeback because every guru and their mom is pushing the same softwares and the same list. And I'll tell you the softwares to use too. Like everyone uses software now, but a lot of people are getting too reliant on software, right? And if you kind of go back to the, they were software days, but the pre where software got like insanely weird, you can get some good wholesaling deals here. And, and the, the honest truth here is any stacked lists that from in a paid service is not going to be a like you're not going to see a lot of them and not a lot of people like talking about them or like doing these type of lists but they're absolutely crucial for success and let's kind of break down exactly what these stacked lists are and for example if i pull the high equity list the liens list the tax delinquency list and maybe we could sprinkle in some tired landlords on there and just stack them all. And so that means I can put them all on one list and find the ones that repeat more than once. This is a stacked list. This might be a property that pops up there that is a vacant pre-foreclosure 
with a lean on it that has high equity, right? Like we, we kind of add a bunch of motivating factors and you kind of look at these motivating factors and you can see if something has more than two or three motivating factors on the property, oh, it's the chance of it being a really good deal is in, insane, right? And so the reason why we're pulling lists today is number one is because there's motivating factors with these, right? And so for example, I, I said pre-foreclosure, right? If I have a pre-foreclosure lead, that is a motivating factor. But if the house is also need a lot of repairs, that's a, another motivating factor. And if let's say I add a lien on that or something, that is another motivating factor. And if there's multiple motivating factors, it's going to be even better. And that's kind of the point, right? If we're looking at a basketball player, if I want to see if you have a chance of being an NBA player, you're a good shooter. Okay. That's a good factor. You're super tall. It's a really important factor, right? Uh, maybe you train a lot, it's a big, big factor, and maybe you're not a lazy bum. It's a good factor, right? Um, I look at factors, same thing with my employees, right? Like, can they listen to instructions? Can they do this? Can they, can they actually close sellers? And I go through all these and see if they're a good fit or not, right? But the truth is when, when you use all these softwares and you click all these buttons, right? Just pull the lists, stack them on top of each other. Some have stacked, like you can stack them yourself with it. Uh, but really at frillsing.com, we teach you how to do this. This is a good one. On top of this too, and this isn't something that's, talked about like crazy, but stacking code violations and brought water shutoffs and fire damage properties and, and really government type lists is a good one too. And, and one thing I love doing is let's say I'll pull the arrest record list and then I'll go pull the lien list. And then you're going to find some good factors here with go. I like pulling all my government lists, putting them all like, let's say it's to Let's do a county and there's 2000 government lists from pre-foreclosures, arrest records, water shutoffs, all these things, right? And I put them all on a list and I'll find some properties stack up more than once or there's more than one factor on this. And so I might get a property where the person got arrested. There's a lien put on the property and it's behind on the mortgage. Like three factors in one is just triple motivation. And so the chance of that person actually being a motivated seller and actually being a good wholesaling deal triples like three X's insane to me, but most people aren't willing to have that conversation that that is an important thing for us to get wholesaling deals. And so it's something I highly recommend. Now, number five here, this is a big one. These are fire damage properties. We're talking about the hottest lists. What is hotter than a property put up in flames? Come on. Everyone knows this, right? And so if you want to go find a hot, motivated seller list, go after fire damage properties. Like the house literally went on fire. There is massive damage going on in the house. That's a good wholesaling deal. The problem is you as a wholesaler get, oh, it's burnt to a crisp. But I can't make any money on this. I can't win. Really, really. Now you can make a ton of money on a fire damage property list. Oh, I absolutely love the fire damage property list because there's a ton of motivation. These people already had check from their insurance company. Now there are some poor souls that don't have any insurance on the property and the house goes in flames and you get insurance. So it's like, it's, it's hard for me to feel like I feel bad for their situation, but like, I can't give you more money for the property. Unfortunately, right. That's how the job works, but it's, there's a lot of profits on here, right? Um, I had a podcast last year of a guy who did over a million dollars and he only does fire damage properties around the United States. It, insane. It was a great episode. Um, I, I definitely recommend everyone just search fire damage property space flip and the right will pop up. But like I just, there's so many people going after this niche, but that guy specifically, why he was able to do seven figures only off fire damage properties was because most people, <clears throat> A, don't know how to pull the fire damage property list. And number two, they're too scared to talk to the seller. And this guy just went to freehosting.com. I kid you not. Saw me talk about it. Saw me how to pull it. He kind of advised his own strategy a little bit on it. Then he made a ton of money doing it, right? It's not that complicated, right? And, and you know, you, you can't teach someone a book. Sorry, you can't teach a kid how to ride a bike by him reading the book. On ride a bike. And what I mean by is you can't you can't learn how to ride a bike by reading a book, right? You got to do it. And so, yes, I'm telling you how to pull the fire damage property list. I'm showing you the screen shares, all these things. But until you actually go 
sit down behind your computer, call the fire department and ask for a list of all properties that were in on fire for the past 30 days. And then you get an email to you. You go to cyber background checks or truepeoplesearch.com, get it skip traced. Until you start doing that, calling them, seeing motivated sellers, getting wholesaling deals, getting checks, like it's not going to be real to you, right? Until you actually start getting the money, right? And that's kind of the point we're talking about today, right? You are not going to get the money that you want in wholesaling real estate unless you put in the work. You can't be a lazy bum right now. You got to do the effort. You do the effort, you'll get the results. So fire damage property is a great one. Next year, I can go down the list more and more every single time, right? But the, the one thing I love it is liens. Liens are an amazing list. I don't think enough people are pulling liens either because liens inherently come from a judgment based off of motivating factor. So let's say you don't pay your child support payments, don't pay your taxes, you don't pay the code violation, you don't pay your mortgage. Sometimes liens get put on there, right? There's so many of these types of issues that arise when you actually go out here and don't pay your bills. And you can't really hide away, right? Um, if you don't pay your IRS taxes from the federal government, slap, they put a lien on your house, don't pay your credit card bill, lien on the house, right? Really, if you go behind on your bills, there's going to be a lien on the house. And my favorite part about this is when you don't pay your bills, you're probably not taking care of the property and you probably want to cash off or on your property, right? It's a super important. I love liens. Liens are probably one of the best lists to be going after, especially if you're someone who is struggling right now trying to wholesale houses. If you're struggling right now to get wholesaling real estate deals, if you're struggling right now to every to really do deals, you got to go out here and do the liens. Literally, just go to the clerk of the court, look at the liens that are filed, or heck, I like just doing the court dockets. And then you can find people putting judgments on houses or liens or lien files, and it's all on there, right? Like, just it, it's so simple to do right now. And I know some court people, like some processes through the court is a lot more difficult than others, but it doesn't have to be like that. If you actually put your head to it, and actually put some effort, you'll get the reward. And these are big wholesaling deals, guys. I'm not telling you to do this to just get a little bit of a summon fee, right? We're talking about huge summon fees here. Humongous. All right. Number three here, trying for dollars and reverse trying for dollars. Now, this is when the broken record player of me goes on and on and on. And you, you, how many times have I said trying for dollars? How many times have I said reverse trying for dollars? A lot, a lot. I, I think I'm mentally insane how many times I say this. But when people come to me, okay, and they say, Zach, I got to check. You changed my life because I drove for dollars. I say, oh, I'm not mentally insane. I just got to keep doing what I do when people actually get wholesaling deals. But I feel like I'm nuts. But the cool part is, and the part not a lot of people see is, People send me checks. People post it on the group that, wow, Zach, you changed my life because you were so annoying about trying for dollars that I actually did wholesaling deals. I'm like, oh, that's great. And I feel like I'm crazy about this stuff, but like it, it all leads to me repeating the same thing. And so just in case anyone thinks I'm, I'm, I'm crazy or I'm lying, you know, let's show some receipts here. You know, shout out to uh, Edgar here. Edgar out here did his first deal. Um, Real grateful, came across, flip the work on YouTube, consistency. So uh, love to see it. How much did he do here? He made, he made I'm like an old man here, uh, 20 grand. Holy moly, made 20 grand off from the YouTube channel here. So I uh, want to give a shout out to Edgar here. And uh, who we got? We got Dante right here. Dante closed in six months, no deals. First two months, closed two. Uh, first was only 100 bucks. And then uh, and had to JV the deal, did a system momentum 2024 sacrifice, thanks to uh, Rick and Zach Ginn. And he made another 20,000 stinking dollars right there. And, and so I want you to understand here, right? And just, I'm not crazy when I'm repeating myself. I know I seem like I'm a crazy person. And then like, this was the other day here. Shout out to uh, my boy, Victor. Victor actually, he did his first wholesaling deal. And... He came on the channel and just said, thank you on one of the one-on-ones. But uh, he's been crazy too. He's a $12,000 assignment fee. Uh, he went on Facebook Marketplace. Um, 
did the seller there. He was doing my strategies there. Told the partner, blah, 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 blah. He signed. He got the EMD. And then he agreed to a 67000 He got a $67,000, another assignment deal here. How much was this one? This is another twelve grand to him. He literally did Martin County, Florida, which is kind of crazy to me. So that's literally where I live. Um, he decided to do my county, which is awesome. And uh, he's just absolutely destroying it. And I just, I just wanted to give not a little break here, just to tell you guys here, but like what I'm doing works, right? What I'm doing is actually getting results. And I know I sound crazy saying very similar lists sometimes, but it's the simple work that gets the results, right? Here's another one. Shout out to Abel here. Uh, Abel made about, let's see here. So I was making close to 200K a year. He tried wholesaling. Um, and then he got us a bunch of checks. So uh, eight grand, six, six, 7,500 bucks, 7,100, 15 grand. So uh, shout out to Abel there. He's a, uh, that's insane to me. And so uh, he's another guy that just listens to what I say. And he's one of the people that hear this crazy guy talk that actually get results. And I'm not saying this to brag or, or say that I'm better than every wholesaling guru, even though I am. It's just to show them that, yes, I say very, very similar things with my marketing a lot. And I get a lot of comments on that sometimes. But it's because it's the simple things that I talk about that will change people's lives. And if you're watching this and 200 grand this year will change your life, listen to what I have to say. Listen to these lists because these lists will yield the results. These lists will make you deals by just changing your attitude, by just changing the effort you're going to be putting in and consistently pulling the list I talk about today. You're going to be just like those guys that literally past day, just posting checks saying, thanks, Zach. Like, yes, I know people think you're nuts, but your, your mad, crazy sayings and, and, and the list you tell me to do actually work. And it's not just me doing well with it. It's other people. And you just got to do it. And, you know, I can go tell you out here to go drive for dollars, right? And I love saying that, right? But maybe it takes me to show some guys making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year just from the list that I talk about to make you actually start doing it. Because some of y'all, like me just saying to do it, ain't going to do it. Me telling you to go to freelancing.com won't get you to go to freelancing.com. But maybe showing three guys who are going to hopefully clear six figures who went to freelancing.com and subscribed to this YouTube channel, they did it. So maybe if you want to be like them, you should subscribe to the channel, go to freelancing.com, actually do what I say so you can get the results. I don't go out here day after day, day after day sharing you free wholesaling content so you can be a lazy bum. You are getting an opportunity to learn wholesaling real estate for free and you got to treat it as a privilege. Not as I just like, this is just something that, because I, I can I hop off YouTube, go ghost, make my easy passive income for my rentals and don't deal with this. But I do it because I know it changes lives and it'll help you change your life. So just a quick, a quick break from what I'm saying. So you understand that you have to go out here and do it. Those people didn't get rich or they didn't make their money wholesaling from just sitting on their bum saying, oh, that list was hard. That list was hard. No, they went out here and did the work. If you want to get rich and do the work, you've got to go out here and pull these lists and go out here like a mad, crazy person. People thought I was crazy when I cold called five hours a day, five days a week for a year straight. People thought I was nuts working 15, 16 hours every single day, day. Wholesaling, day in and day out, day in and day out. Pulling the same lists, doing the same calls, just following up with sellers all day, all day, all day, all day. Looking through all the data. You know how many lists I've pulled to figure out which lists are going to work this year or not? It's a lot of data. It's a lot of wholesaling. Guys, I eat, breathe, and sleep this business. And so what I'm saying right now is you have kind of got all this information right here on a silver, pl silver platter. It's up to you what you're going to do with this information. And so let's talk about drawing for dollars and reverse drawing for dollars. Guys, I have cold called hours and hours and hours and hours a day. And my skill set is really good on it. But I'll tell you, the, one of the biggest regrets I have, and I don't really have regrets, 
But I would say we're drying for dollars. If I've spent five hours drying for dollars and reverse drying for dollars when I could when I was cold calling, I would have made more money wholesaling by far. And it would have been way easier. So you don't have to be cold calling five hours a day. You can do other strategies that are actually better now. And I, I was a dumb kid, 18, I'm a teenager. What, what do you expect, right? <clears throat> but I did follow, I, I will say it's not a regret because I did follow my number one, one of my biggest principal rules in wholesaling is when you find something that works, keep doing it and just don't stop doing it. And then maybe when, when you just, you keep doing and kind of hit a plateau, then add extra. And so I found cold calling government lists to work really well. Like I was just pulling code violations, cold calling them. I was literally going out here, pulling the liens, cold calling them. Then I got in the paid list and like, that's what I was doing when I was cold calling like crazy. And it worked really well. But the truth here is I just found what was working and I kept doing it. And so all of these lists that I talk about today are things that I had, I, I, I wasn't doing at all. And then I just started doing a little bit of it. It started doing well. I'm like, let's do more of that. And the more I did, the better results I got. And so drawing for dollars was something I really wasn't a big drawing for dollars person starting out. I really wasn't. It was bandit signs and cold calling and texting. And then really when I started adding drawing for dollars in, you know, kind of that term when I was 19, 20, started getting more wholesaling deals. And, and really before, tw so in 2019-ish, started putting sticky notes out. 2018, yeah, about 2018, put, started putting sticky notes out, starting getting results. And I only started doing this because I was driving around my appointments and I found ugly houses and I just started, put, started putting sticky notes out. They worked really well. And so just going to car, look for ugly houses. Love drawing for dollars. It's still severely underrated. And they got, got one of the best apps out here, dmzack.com to do it. Heck, zackdata.com has a drawing for dollars app. That's amazing. A tier below that's going to be listari.com. They're drawing for dollars app. That's one you got to be doing, right? Number two here, pre-foreclosures. So like I've said before, something that's making a big comeback right now is going to be lists that worked really well when I was starting out that kind of got too oversaturated and the guru stopped talking about it. And now it's kind of making a full swing comeback. And these are pre-foreclosures. There's just, the data is out here on foreclosures that they are peaking up a little. One thing I can tell you right now is pre-foreclosures is absolutely insane right now. It's a government list. Now you can kind of use data and you can use any paid software for this, but like pre-foreclosures right now, guys, <sighs> lordy, lordy. They're doing well. These are people not paying their mortgage payments and they need to get rid of the property and they're probably going to have an auction date set on the house. So amazing lists to be going on. These are going to be lists that have a ton of motivation. And if you know how to market to these sellers, you can get great wholesaling deals. What I recommend, I recommend texting these people and reverse drawing for dollars on them. Those are going to be my top two ways of getting a hold of these. And then direct mail if you want to get direct mail. Honestly, I have found personally, that's going to be your best way to get a wholesaling deal with a pre-foreclosure seller. Go to the clerk of the court, get pe go to the list pendants or the notice of default or notice of foreclosure section, get all those court filings, get ahead, get in front of the owners and just text them, reverse trying for dollars and get the deals. The reason why I put this so highly on my list is if you do SMS reverse trying for dollars, they'll work well. If you are going to be a person that cold calls the pre-foreclosures, I do not recommend it. Just, it's one of my rules. Uh, as a cold caller, I've tried. It's not going to be one of my favorites, but it, it, it's because it's very difficult to get in front of pre-foreclosure sellers. So I found if you put sticky notes or you text them, you can get in front of them and get wholesaling deals. And then number one, like always can be probates. There, there's nothing more motivating for someone to get rid of a house than if somebody has a house that they're not emotionally attached to. And if someone inherits a house, there's not too much emotional attachment unless they grew up in the house, right? And I have plenty of these situations that there's a lot of wholesaling opportunity here and there's a lot of profits to be made. Uh, so this is going to be the probate list. It's going to be a list of people that pass away. You're going to talk to the heirs of the property and they're great. Now, the, the one thing I, I added on here are going to be even the obituaries. And I'll tell you this, it, the amount of competition right now when it comes to the probate list is getting crazier and crazier. And I kind of blame this YouTube channel for it a little bit and reverse trying for dollars and all these things. But I will preach to everyone right now that probates are still to this day one of the best pound for pound time and like 
pound for pound, the amount of time you put in versus the amount of assignment feeds you can make, one of the best lists out there. There's so much motivation. And yes, there's going to be a lot of people that don't want to sell. But the ones that want to sell, want to get rid of it, want to get rid of it for quick. And if you can get over the hurdle of it being in probate and having the right title people with the right probate attorneys and you don't have to pay any money, you got no money, that's okay. You really teach in freehosting.com how to do this. You can get huge wholesaling deals. Like when I talk about newbies and I'm not trying to get the get rich quick, make a lot of money type people uh, attracted to this. But I'm going to say something that's going to get you guys really into this. The, um, the number one list if you're going to get your, if you want to make $50,000 on your first wholesaling deal, like in the next 30 days, if you want to make $50,000, you got to do a probate. Like for newbies out here, probates are the way. And I tried and true, the biggest checks I see people share with me or people post are going to be the probates. Hands down, the largest assignment fees, always probates. Like when I make $100,000 plus on an assignment deal, there's about a 95% chance that thing's a probate. Or there's a probate and there's some death associated with it. It's amazing, guys. So go after the probates. We teach you at adfreehosting.com and you go out here and learn how to wholesale real estate absolutely free. Guys, go to freehosting.com. That's where we share exactly how to find the hottest list for 2024. So uh, let's answer some questions, <clears throat> see how everyone's doing today and uh, get it going. So job has got a good one here. You know, I love looking at the comments here because people do share some uh, interesting uh, thoughts and everything on here. One thing I will say is yes, evictions are an honorable mention. I absolutely love the evictions list. and I do highly recommend it. Is it top seven? Probably not. Is it top 10? Yes. And this is a list not a lot of people talk about. These are people getting evicted from rich landlords. Love it. Arrest record's probably going to be uh, probably 12. I know there's so many lists to pull, you know, and I'm just, I'm not trying to give like 50 or 30 because, oh, it's overwhelming. But I'd say arrest, arrest records are good. You just got to learn how to do it the right way. You'd be fine. But I love the arrest record list. Let's see here. Got my first list from City and enforcement violation list. Awesome. Congrats, Frank. Let's see here. All right, let's see here. Uh, so Mikey says, having trouble getting the water shot off list. The utility company says they will not give it to me. So Mikey, you need to talk to the person actually in charge. So actually talk to the person in charge of the water, basically the utility company. Now, you, you got to understand if the utility company is an actual private corporation, you won't get the information, okay? It's like asking a guru how much money they made. Show proof, they won't. It's a private corporation. They don't have to. Now you can ask a public employee how much they make and they have to tell you. Or not they have to tell you, but you can find out because they are a government employees. So private company doesn't have to do it. Just got to do that. Let's see here. All right. I've got some good questions here. Let's see here. So uh, Justin... Fog says, which Facebook groups do you recommend? Don't they flag you for spamming? So you don't spam. You, you don't post 17 posts in one Facebook group overnight, right? There's a lot of ways to do it, right? A lot of people like warming up uh, lists. I mean, it's up to you. What I would say is if you just go to a Facebook group, and my favorite one is like if I go to, I don't know. Let's do the, let's look here for an example. I'll do one. Um, let's do the... Marvel fans in Palm Beach County Facebook. I don't know. There's really niched out lists, right? I uh, sorry, niched out Facebook groups. I can go post a picture of like, let's say this Fantastic Four um, limited edition Doom on the cover. This is a pretty valuable little comic here. Um, before when Doom gets on the Marvel movies, he, th this comic book is kind of like five X in value because um, Doom is going to be absolutely insane for Secret Wars. But um, what I'm saying is that this issue right here, I take a picture of it. It'll get a lot of likes because the Marvel fans love Doom. Doom's one of my favorite villains. Um, and I'll say this is one of my uh, collectible uh, comic books. And I think it's going to open value. I'm excited. I like it. Can't wait for the new movies coming out in the future. And then I'm going to say, 
Also, besides collecting comic books, I want to actually acquire or collect more property. I actually also buy a lot of real estate. If you're looking to sell your house, let me know. Me and my partner are looking to buy a couple more in Palm Beach County. And just posting something like that, easy, simple, right? There's, um, we got, we, there's like sneakerhead groups and like the Houston sneakerhead group. Post your new Yeezy pods or something. I don't know. Um, and have them roast you or something, but like you can do that, I guess. Um, and just post that, say got new, new kicks or here's my shoes. Um, also if you're looking to sell your house, let me know. Like, uh, like, like, like it's stupid. I know it sounds stupid, but like stuff like that. That's how you get wholesaling deals, right? Let's see here. So what place are vacants on listria.com in? <clears throat> Uh, vacants are good, but <sighs> honestly, what I'll tell you is anyone can pull the vacant. That, that's the, like, it's definitely a good one, but it's not like, oh my gosh, like this is like the most important list ever. It is something I would say though, that you should be doing still. But the point is every month there's new lists. And the cool thing is there's more lists than actual time you can call or text or market, right? So you got to choose which one to do. It's never there's a lack of lack of lists. Let's see here. Matthew says, I like these lives because it gives me a chance to ask questions. Hey, Zach, what's your take on having? Uh, so he, he's asked me a question here. What is your take on having a We Buy Homes business as the cash or end buyers? Any experience with this? having a business as the cash buy. I mean, it depends how you want to market the business. I like marketing it when I had no money of, hey, me and my partner are looking to buy some houses because you guys are buying it together. Now, if you're at like where I'm at, where I can just buy the house for cash, then I'm going to just be the end buyer. And I go from me and my partner, just I'm just buying it. Now, because I have the cash to do it and I have lots of proof I can do it. Now, if you don't say me and my partner, that's probably the best way around it. And the best way we kind of talk about that. Let's see. Louis says, uh, do you recommend using Google Voice <clears throat> uh, for cold calling? What are the cons of using a personal cell phone? <sighs> it's up to you, right? I think Google Voice is still going to be the best one to use. Um, your phone's good too. But you got to remember, you got to get multiple lines if you're cold calling, like just hand dialing it. Your personal cell phone is going to be the best and then do a little bit of Google voice from here and then kind of switch it up. You don't want them all to be spammed out. Uh, but I would say there's not really many cons from your personal cell phone. Like got them at the end of the day, it's a cell phone. Like it, it's a phone number. Like you can always change a phone number. It's your life will not change. Okay. I know you, you and Jessica like tech texting about the, your favorite, you know, TV shows, but like you probably have Jessica on Instagram and you can go message her your new phone number. Like, the world will not end if you change the phone number if it's spam, right? Uh, Google Voice, you can always change the phone number there. So I recommend, I like Google Voice the best because if the phone number goes spam, you can change that. It's a lot harder to change your personal cell phone because it's going to be, it's easy to tell Jessica that, but if you tell your grandma, she's probably not going to get your new phone number. So that's the other problem here. Let's see here. Shout out to DeAndre. So I talked to DeAndre before. I think uh, DeAndre's from Canada. I think he had that Jamaican flag behind him. I'm pretty sure that's who he was. I, I think we had a nice conversation about this, about virtual wholesaling. Um, but his question here is, I'm moving to Florida. I'm driving for dollars to increase my revenue and leads. What cities would be best to do that? I mean, all of Florida is nice uh, with wholesaling. It, I mean, some aren't. I would say if you're looking just to move to Florida for wholesaling, don't do it. Just virtually wholesale. It's not the, I wouldn't move here just to do wholesaling. I mean, I, I would probably move to Georgia. I'd probably go to Birmingham. I like Knoxville a lot. Like there's better places to move to. Virginia is really good too. Um, but if you're going to do Florida because you hate Canada and the weather, I get it. I would say Orlando's good. Jacksonville's great. Even the space coast of Florida, space coast of Florida is not terrible. Uh, like Melbourne, 
I mean, that general vicinity, heck, even even Alachua County is not bad either. Like anything north of north of Palm Beach, and nothing too west of Okeechobee, you'd be fine. I'm not going to say Tampa or St. Pete. It's not good for drying for dollars specifically. Jawbaw says, uh, Rick mentioned you having a separate VOIP, so basically a virtual number uh, for each direct mail campaign. How do you do that? Uh, it's pretty simple. You just use CallRail. CallRail is one of my favorite tools for doing it. You get separate phone numbers each time. I uh, love CallRail. That's how we do it. So uh, Jessa Lee Gomez says, can you pull water shut off your prop stream? Yes, you can. Uh, the best way to do that is to just go out here to listrei.com, go to the liens section, and then go to the utility liens. And that's going to be the water shut off list on listrei.com you can do. Uh, they're all a little different, but that's probably the best way to be doing it. Let's see. So how do I find the pre-foreclosure list online? So if you're going to do it for free, you go to the clerk of the court, you go to the list pendant section, or you go to the notice of default, or you go to the notice of foreclosure section. But Tristan, you know what I'm going to say, man. If, you, if you're asking this question, you clearly haven't gone through the pre-foreclosure module on freehosting.com where I have graphics and a presentation and I sit down for an hour. I screen share. I show the whole thing. Go to the course, man. Freeholstling.com, dude. Come on. Drives me crazy. Uh, Kenneth says, hey, Zach. Um, is there creative finance deep dives in Flipboard Plus? There is. We're working on some more on there. But, like, I mean, you can just literally text me in Flipboard Plus any creative finance question. So you, you just get access to me and Rick. Or you just go to live events and we'll talk about it. So, I mean, I guess so. Um, I don't know specifically what you want to know more. I mean, we have some in there. Yes. But like, it, it tells me what you're looking into do it. seems like if you're newer into creative finance, just we can talk about it. We've got free videos and we got all the stuff in, on the YouTube channel to learn creative finance. There's no like, the, the thing is there's no secret like information that we have in flip third plus. That's like, we, we hide back from you guys. Like there's not like create, like everything I talk about, the information is always going to be free. Now, if you want to come, see me in my live event you want to get extra time one-on-one -on -one with me on like extended live streams or zooms or message me about deals and stuff yeah i go to flipbook plus send me a jv deal sellmypaper.com we'll be good to go because uh, i cannot do a zoom individually one-on-one -on -one with 500 people every single day right um, so we make it smaller on purpose right and i'm, I'm not gonna have 50,000 people come to an event and Someone's going to sue me there. So I got to make it. Uh, I, I like the smaller events. As you see from our first event, we're posting the videos on, right? If Chloe's shown, like the information, I literally just post, I literally will post the event. So the next event we have in April, I'm posting the event on YouTube. So like, don't feel like you have to come for the secret info. Now coming to me and talking to me one-on-one, -on -one, hanging out after, like that stuff's important. But that stuff like uh, doesn't get posted. There's no cameras or whatever there. Uh, but the information is going to be available to anyone. And so that's why I'm asking what, like, do you want to know more about, so you want to know about, let's see. So Kenneth, like, so I'm not even going to, so here's the thing, Kenneth, and this is not good, but like you're talking, you're, you're literally telling me marketing terms. You're going to sound like an idiot in front of a lawyer. Hey, can I do this? Uh, blah, 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 blah. It, it's not the right term for what you're talking about. The right term is subject to. When you guys switch the names up to sound sexy and cool, it's like, hey, I'm doing a gin deal. What do you think I'm going to say? What, if I talk to a lawyer and say, yeah, we're going to gin deal this. What do you, what's a gin deal? It's a gin deal. Oh, everyone knows about a gin deal. I have it uh, copyrighted from the trademark department. It's, it's, it's not a legal term for creative finance. And so you need to go through the creative finance videos. Okay. I get, no. So that term is not, you just call it by the real name, subject to, okay? I can call it something again deal, but let's actually do with the real definition of it, right? So wholesaling real estate, the legal definition is basically 
doing selling an assignment of contract or selling my contract or assigning my deal for a profit. That's what it is. I'm not going to call it doing, uh, I'm not calling it, oh, we, we just did a llama deal. Like a llama deal, like, come on. It's so stupid. I hate when gurus do this because then I talk to their students and we're JV together. They're like, oh yeah, we just llama it. I'm like, what's a llama? Oh, we do the llama method. I, stop this. I'm a llama. I, you're not a llama. You're a human being. Shut up. But like, you, you, we have to use what lawyers actually talk about because we're professionals in, in, in this business. We're not, oh, we llama it. No, okay. And so if you, when you're talking about this deal here, you're, you're talking about, let's see, uh, a seller carry back with a subject to on a mortgage and a lease to option. So a lease to own or a, a lease to option. So it is, so a lease option. And so bro, like Kenneth, hop on here one-on-one. We got the link. I'll just talk to you for free on this. I don't really care. Like I, the one thing is if you have a seller carry back and you're doing the subject to with a lease with an option to buy, they're, they're both contradicting things. And so what I mean by this is a lease to own with a subject to, so are you getting the property subject to, and then you're trying to, uh, you got to tell me, sorry, are you doing a subject to, and then you're trying to get another buyer? So basically the buyer is going to be the lease to own type guy. So no, is it, but you're saying it's a seller carry back. You're kind of, here's the problem, man. Like the issue is you're, you're doing contradictory stuff on this. Okay, it's like I'm I'm hot, but I'm cold. I'm trying to sell hot ice. It's like what's hot ice? It's it's ice, but it's really warm. It's like what are you talking about? You know, uh, so like they they both a lease option and a subject to are contradict. Now you can do the technically together, but it's not a good deal. You're probably not going to be a good deal, right? Um, when I get a and I I'm not. I'll tell you this. Love, people love getting crazy with creative finance. Like they love getting crazy complicated on deals. If I have a creative finance deal, I'm offering terms on the deal. Oh, terms. My guru invented that. We literally have the, we have how real estate fortunes are made. This book literally talks about buying houses on terms, lease options, subject twos, creative financing. So don't, don't, I use terms because it's something that's been going on for hundreds of years. That way of talking about creative finance. No guru invented terms. All right. That, that's literally in the book. It's my guru attack Bible. Okay. Like when I attack a guru, this book's always in there, right? It's called How Real Estate Fortunes Are Made from George Bockel from 1972. He learned from a guy and he's been doing creative finance, wholesaling, and real estate investing since the 20s. Then he learned from a guy basically in the 1800s, probably, uh, about wholesaling, creative finance, and all these things. It's a real book. We, the, the truth of why I talk about this book so much is I feel like it was from the heavens, that book, because on a wholesaling deal, that book was in the closet when we bought, uh, when we found it, we, we got to keep the book. It's insane. And so that came down and gave us new strategies on wholesaling that kind of got lost in history. And my, my goal is to keep his legacy alive and teach him the strategies he talks about. He literally talks about digital bandit time. He literally talks about how to go to newspapers and do we buy ugly houses ads, how to do actually call to actions on the bottom, all these things. It's it's insane. How to structure creative finance, how to find employees for acquisitions. Love it. And, and so when I get a wholesaling deal, kind of use old principles, terms. And so am I either going to get the property subject to, and am I going to give them a little up front and then rent the property out? Or am I going to lease with a lease option? So get a lease with an option to buy on it. You can do that too. You can sandwiches, you can do crazy stuff with it, but I, I will tell you if you're not going to get a good ROI, what's the point? And the problem with credit finance, I'm not, I'm going to finish my rant here soon, um, is just because somebody takes terms doesn't make it a good wholesaling deal. And it, it, it's insane to me that people think that just because somebody wants a cash offer on their house doesn't mean it's a good wholesaling deal. Drives me crazy. So uh, let's talk about it. And also this book, that book was selling for 15 bucks on bookstores. And then when, when our YouTube channel hit like 100,000 subscribers, the book now sells for 150. I'm getting up to 200 bucks. Um, there's PDFs and stuff of it you can find online. I'm not telling you to do that. Uh, but there are people that have that information out here. 
so you can go from there. All right, let's go here. So the book is, and I will, I'll talk about. It. It's called How Real Estate Fortunes Are Made. So literally, this, it's on Amazon for two hundred bucks right now. And so you don't have to pay two hundred bucks. This is not worth two hundred bucks. This is a book from the seventies, and I, I, I talk about it a little too much lately, so I'm going to stop. But really, if you read the back, and I'm just going to go through kind of the outline context, right? He, this book is amazing. It's really old. I, I've been, I've read it so many times, but pretty much like, heck, even if I, let's talk about this, right? And this is one part of this, which is insane to me. Um, if you go to page, let's see here. If I go to, let, let's talk about one part of this book and then I'm going to the next part. Okay. Small towns of America, secret gold mine of the future where he's talking about something that I talked about on this channel about wholesaling. And one thing about what he talked about in this book from the seventies is everyone loves the big city, right? And this is really stupid if you really think about it, but like, let's say wholesaling in Philadelphia, Philadelphia is a big city. If you go outside the suburbs, there's gold mines there, like Reading, Pennsylvania, kind of outside of Philly, but like still bigger population gold mine of wholesaling deals because no one go, they only go after the city. He basically talks about this here, right? Um, here's another one. He talks about um, credit finance on a 7% interest. Uh, there's big money in small condos and apartments, which I've always talked about for wholesaling, right? Uh, let's go about doing a 5% down on a 700 unit on here. Um, let's go here on the next one. Re how to rezone the suburbs and then flip it. Um, good wholesaling one. Let's go here. And specifically how to go out here, how to, then he gets, he gets some crazy stuff here, even in this, right? Let's, let's go to page 82. All right. And this is the last one that I promise you page 82 in the book. All right. Innovative ideas that change men with a student investors. Now I know it sounds stupid, but literally it's talking about marketing strategies. That's the best way to do it. How to get into a big deal with little to no money. And basically he talks about here and let's get in, let's see. So blah, 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 blah. Let's go, hold on, go to the index here. I was trying to find it. I had it actually set out. I was going to talk about it. Let's go here. Um, 84. Okay. It's 84. Said yes, the voice we're looking for 5,000 square feet in the location, triple A tenant, and then basically thousand down, fifty nine thousand dollars in in closing. And so he's talking about this deal, and you know how he found the deal? You ready for this? In the 70s, cold calling. Boom, cold calling deals. It's it's insane to me. Um now the one thing if you do get this book and you do talk about it. His way of talking about wholesaling calls it wholesale buying. Um, it's just, just older people talking about wholesale. It's called wholesale buying. Um, and they only talk about terms, but. Ah. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do with that later. Uh, but uh, it's, I'm just telling you, like any guru that says they invented wholesaling, they did not. And there's 50 other books. I want to collect old wholesaling books from like the 60s and 50s and 40s probably. I'm a weird guy, um, but I'm telling you, it changed a lot. But yeah, we're excited about that. All right, so uh, let's see here. Vic says, you can go and visit them. Yeah, you can visit a rest record people in jail, um, our gurus. Uh, the Real Deal says, when's the live event in Dallas? The live event is going to be April 24th and 25th, Dallas, Texas. Me and Rick can live, Wholesaling Accelerator. We're excited about that. Uh, you know, you can go it. Go to Flipbook Plus to get your ticket there, or you can send me a JV deal and go for free. Up to you. If you got a JV deal, just go to sellmypaper.com. Send me a wholesaling deal. Let's all make some money wholesaling. Let's see here. Tyrese, I have a deal under contract. You're interested in JV. You've posted this 16 times. Uh, yes, just go to sellmypaper.com. Here's the problem, though. I, I, I will let everyone know this. If you send me a JV deal, and it is a bad JV deal, I will not wholesale it. Let me repeat myself. 
I have done thousands of wholesaling deals. And so I have people that I work with that will underwrite the deal. And when they underwrite the deal, they're going to see if it's a good deal or not using criteria that I set forth, me and Rick. If it's not a good wholesaling deal, I'm not. Just because you have a deal under contract doesn't mean I'm automatically going to do it. Tyrese, what, this is a great question. What qualifies a good JV deal? Huh. Hmm. 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 Uh, if I can make money, that's what, makes, that's what makes a good JV deal. And I know it sounds stupid, but like, let's talk about it. If you have a deal under contract, if I can find a buyer to buy that deal for over the contract price, and I know I can make some money on it, I'll be good. I like to make over five, 10, 15 grand because uh, there are splits with these deals, but you do get, you do get flipped plus or free uh, by sending me deals. I mean, yeah, I, you're going to go, right? But like one thing I can tell you is if it's in like, so you said it's in a small market. If it's a small market, and there's no buyers. If, if it's in a small market and there's no buyers, it's probably not a good wholesaling deal. But like, it depends. We'll, 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 we'll have the underwriters look at it, right? And so people think I'm behind a sweatshop all day underwriting deals and, and calling you guys. I, it's, a, it's a team. It's people. That's what I do. I wholesale houses. So yeah, that's what I do here. Yeah. Um, Tyree says, can I get one of your reps to talk under? You got to submit the deal and then they'll call you or message you or let you know about the deal. If you're not confident that deal can make money, you're no. And so my biggest problem with JVs, and we'll get into some more questions, is you guys will send me a deal because you 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 try to sell it and no one wants to buy that deal. You, you talk to 17 buyers and they all say, that's a crap deal. And then you say, you know what? Let's go to Zach. Zach will find something. And no, I, I don't do that. 17 buyers say that it's not a good deal. It's not a good wholesome. All right. So uh, let's do some one-on-ones too. So if you guys want to talk to me one-on-one for free, I do do one-on-one video calls. I like talking to you guys. Uh, we just got to go out here. All right. So if you want to hop on, talk to me one-on-one for free, I'll show you the link. You go to Wholesaling Houses for Real. That is my Facebook group where I literally just people post their checks, people interact, people are actually in a community all the time. You guys can talk all things wholesaling, real estate, love Wholesaling Houses for, for Real. It's an amazing Facebook group. I literally go, you're in the group, 132,000 of my best friends all on here. And uh, you literally scroll down here, you click featured, and right here it's pinned. You click join here, and boom, you'll be joined to talk to me. That's it. Simple and easy. So uh, let's talk to everyone on here. So, uh, John, what is up, man? Oh, he's cold calling. I'll get to you later. Don't worry. Keep keep on the phone, homie. That's good. He's, he's closing wholesaling deals. We'll get to John. Hey, D, what's up, man? Hi, Zach. How are you? I'm blessed, man. How are you? Good. So, sorry. Let me look at So, I have some questions about the government list. Of course. So, for the liens... Is there like certain liens that I should should avoid and should not avoid or like hospital mm -hmm. liens or child support liens? Yeah. So I'll tell you there's three liens I hate. There are going to be child support liens because they're very aggressive and some of them are she massive. So just because you're, you're being a – just because you're not taking care of your kid doesn't make you a bad uh, – it doesn't mean the house is unmotivated. I, child support has never been a big factor for me. Two hospital liens. I've never gotten good wholesaling deals from that. And then last, mechanics liens. Because people are actually actively renovating the house. Those are the three ones I haven't found the best success with. And what are liens that I should not avoid? Pretty much the rest. Like tax liens are great. The credit card debt lien list. People with IRS taxes. People not paying from the government. So code violation liens. Basically, any other lien is pretty good to, good to go. Now, they're hard to figure out. Cause these liens are going to be like for one of them is going to be like six grand from capital one. And you're like, what's that? Right. That lien is most likely going to be a credit card lien. So those are going to go after, but you got to make sure those people own real estate. Okay. And, and for the evictions list, I saw that like on one of your videos, you went to the official records and I was wondering what if they're not on the official records? Like how, how do I say it to the person or the County courthouse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're just going to ask, um, how do I find out the court records for the evictions for the county? 
and they should tell you. Now, some have to go through the sheriffs. Usually it goes to the court and then the sheriff actually executes that, right? Uh, so it really depends on what which one you want to be doing here. I would say that you just have to just ask nicely. Even the court docket should have the evictions. It's usually an eviction section that they do. Okay. And I'm in Tyler, Texas. That's my uh, market. And so for the for just public records in general, like for code violations, for example, like it literally says on the website that like that public, we're not accepting a public records request right now. How do I go around that? Call and ask. Okay. And for bandit signs, is my does my logo prevent... Uh, sometimes my Craigslist, of course it happens. I got to figure out which ones are staying on or not, but is, can my logo be a part of the reason why my Craigslist post keep yeah, taking yeah, down? I, I, yeah. Pictures. No, no, do not have pictures. So logo is a picture. So I would not do that. So just have a blank. Yep. No pictures. Okay. Sounds good. All, All right. right. Thank Keep you so up, much. Man. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Let's see, is John on the phone? Not on the phone anymore? No, I was mid I was mid cold call. I apologize. All right. No, straight, you're good, man. Yeah. Straight shooter, got a few questions right here. So for my first deal, I'm thinking about I'm I'm definitely gonna do JV. Do you have a criteria for JV deals to be able to make sure that's a sure deal? I think we do just I mean, just don't you're smart enough to figure out if the deal's really bad or not. As long as okay. it's not bad and you think there's some motivation and you got the deal locked up for a good price, you're good to go. Gotcha. Yeah, because I'm in Illinois. I'm in a good market. And then also for the current market conditions, would you recommend doing reverse speed wholesale deals or just regular wholesale deals where you've, you know, obviously, you know what reverse speed is? Yeah. I mean, it's it's ultimately up to you. I do like that method of finding the buyer first and then going to the list and going from there. But getting the buyer should not be too difficult to do. Gotcha. And then speaking about buyers, you know, sometimes, you know, obviously, uh, like the, the method that I'm going to be finding buyers is cold calling cash sales. It's actually worked out mm -hmm. well. Uh, uh, I just yeah. had a general question. So for that, they, you know, like, let's say you cold call a buyer and he's, he's interested in more deals. How do you how do you get like a proof of funds from them? without having any prior relationship or no current inventory to be able to sell to them for a cash buyer. Yeah. Just ask. They'll, they'll just give it. Yeah. You okay. haven't asked enough. That's why you don't know. Okay. Understood. I'll do so. Uh, also, right, well, you know, it's more important than approval funds now, and this has changed my thinking of it is just how many houses have you bought in the past six months or a year? Gotcha. Give me the addresses. Gotcha. So, in, so oh, it's, yeah, so essentially like it's really, it's okay to just vet the buyer from the first cold call, right? Like they won't be weirded out or anything like that. Some of them are, um, some aren't. Um, I just want to make sure you're a good buyer. We've had some situations before. Can you just tell me your company's name? Okay. And can I get a proof of funds? If they, no proof of funds? Oh, I don't want to give you proof of funds. Oh, can you give me the last two or three houses you bought for cash? Just so I can look it up and make sure you're buying them. Any legit guy is not going to be scared of that. Perfect. Good to go. Easy as that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. All right. We got Devin here. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Hey, what's going on, Zach? How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How are you? You're trying good. To I'm well. Hold on. Let me switch my screen so I'm looking at you versus up here. All okay, right. great. Um, sweet, dude. So I had a hit. Okay. What happened to the intro? The – um. The whole like the, the the get hype song, yeah. So the I got permission from him to use it for the channel. Yeah, and then he sold his catalog, oh. and so his he doesn't he didn't own the song anymore. That's fair. And so okay. the the record label was trying to like take down all the videos, and so I had to do a little agreement with him, and be like, okay, you can just get the you get, just take all the YouTube ad revenue. I don't really care. Just don't take down a video. And they're like, okay, right. And so I was like, okay, we're done with these people. Dang um, it, man. Oh, okay. People sell I the catalogs all the time. And so it's, it's kind of crazy, but they do it. Yeah, no, they really do. No kidding. Okay, got you. Um, okay, and so um, I had a quick question. So I'm starting to like create processes and systems and whatnot. Like I use software. I, I just I closed the deal on Friday. 
Um, and so I'm putting some of those funds in towards getting a dialer again, um, just kind of like build actually starting to like actually build a business. Um, but I feel like I may be overcomplicating, um, overcomplicating when it comes to, you know, making processes, um, you know, just from a deal start to finish. Um, so I, I kind of just want to run this by you and, and maybe you can tell me I'm doing too much or I'm overthinking it. Um, but I, I assume it's really just like a checklist. So, um, you know, yeah. it's, you know, just kind of like how you and your dad go over, you know, pulling a list, um, you know, pulling the, the top seven lists, you know, say, say it's, you know, tax delinquents. Um, is, is it really just as simple as this is how you pull the tax language for for me? It's Greg County, um, you know, Greg County. So, you know, go to the courthouse, do this, do that, do this, um, you know, reach out to the, the clerk, ask certain questions. They'll guide you there. Take these take, you know, take the the format that they have and switch it over to a um, Google Sheets, have the the name, the address, the the delinquency you know, whatever, whatever the lien is and so forth, and then export it into, you know, batch skip tracing or deal machine. Right. Mm -hmm. is, is that, is that essentially what I need to be doing? Um, you know, just keeping it really simple like that. So anyone can understand it as I hire. Yeah, I like it. So just get the government list. You can put it into prop stream, put it in a batch, put it into deal machine, whatever you want. Right. It depends what you're doing. Um, but like, yeah, pour it in there. You can kind of filter out the information if you want. I like doing that because some of those government lists, you only get the address. Right. And so if I just put that in a prop stream or something, it'll spit out and kind of do an API for it. Get okay. the information we need. Okay, sweet. Um, I'm gonna think. Okay, um, and then so the fellow uh, Luis, he he was in the in the in the comments that you answered. Uh, he mentioned something about phone numbers. Um, and so with me starting to use the dialer, I've been accustomed to people calling me at the, um, you know, at the exact at the same Google Voice number. Uh, you know, when I'm cold calling them. But when I am starting to call people on a dialer, I've had issues in the past where people will try to call me back, but the dialer just sends them straight to voicemail. Um, oh, or, yeah. You know, stuff like that. Is there any way? Um, and granted, I'm using batch dialer, so I don't, I don't know. If, um, I know each dialer is different. But do you know if there's a way for, for me to get calls from batch dialer, like forwarded over to my, you know, Google voice number to, you know, yeah. the number that I use? Yeah, they have call forwarding. Okay, okay. It should work. Got you. You might need to get their like tech people to help you out with it. Right. But it's been a while since I messed with that. So it's automatically forwarded, but you're going to go on it. Okay, sweet. Um, and then I, I've gone through some of the stuff on, on um, freewholeselling.com when it comes to dispositions. Dispositions is, is not my specialty. Um, generally, I, I know you've mentioned like, you know, stay off of Facebook because that's how you get your deal stolen. Um, and so I, I've used Facebook before. I've had some success, but I've also had just like deals just not work out because I use Facebook. Um, and so I'm curious, is, is it best just to, you know, find them on Facebook groups? And then if none of that works out, then pull a list on um, on listarei.com or like batch or something? Um, or does, does it matter the the uh, sequence of, of how you find those buyers? It's I mean, it's up to you, man. Okay. Cash sales are on like props. You're going to be my yes. favorite. Mm -hmm. but like, you don't have to, right? Facebook is an amazing way just to scrape data. Love it. Right. And so I'll say do that. Like just use the houses at deep discount thing. We have in freelancing.com post it in there. They all drop their emails. I love cold messaging people on Facebook. Okay. And you're going to go in there, right? Hey, you're looking to, I saw in the blank, blank, blank Facebook group, you were looking to buy some more houses. I'm actually a wholesaler and I get deals under contract all the time. Are you still looking to buy a question mark and then go from there, you know? Okay. Uh, but you can cold message 40 or 50 of those at like 8 p.m. at night when you can't cold call anymore, right? Right. And just copy and paste the same message. You're good to go. Okay. Okay, bet that. Um, and then very last thing, KPIs. I spoke to your dad about them for, um, I think it was for cold calling, and he told me to refer back to you um, just to kind of get probably a little more in depth since you're, you're, you're huge on cold yeah. calling. Um, so – Right now, when I'm tracking my KPIs, I'm tracking the dials that I'm calling, or, or I guess really just the dial. So, um, you know, per contact that I call, um, the people that actually answer the phone and that are, you know, qualified calls. Um, and then I, I track my offers that I've made to those um, qualified calls if, you know, they want to move forward. And then the deals that I've got under contract. So those are the four things that I'm tracking right now. Do I need to be tracking anything else? So go, go over them one more time. Yeah, of course. So the dials that I've made, so, you know, mm -hmm. each, each, um, each, 
each address, I'll probably, I started to call just the first two numbers. So after I've called that address, that's one dial. Um, if someone answers the phone and, you know, they are the owner um, and, you know, they're willing to talk to me about the property, um, then I'll, I'll mark them as a, con as a qualified call. Mm -hmm. And then um, if, you know, we get to the point where, you know, they're willing to talk more about the property that, you know, they want to sell, they give me a number then I'll, you know, we'll go back and forth. And if I shoot them an offer, then I'll, I'll record that. And then I'll also record if I get the property under contract. And then of course, you know, deals close. I'll also record that. So actually it's five. Yeah, it's pretty simple, man. So the way that I like to do it is just calls made, calls okay. answered, and then that's basically a contact rate. Right. And then I put how many yeses from those. Okay. And once it's a yes, they just get put in the podio for acquisitions. Okay. And then that's, that's their problem. Sweet. Now, obviously, yeah, if it closes, I, I'd have that on there too. Right. Okay. And so do you mind me asking, how, how come you, so the, the calls answered, how come you track the calls answered? Um, if they're, if it's not the person who, um, because if your phone number's talking. off, if your phone number's off or you have a yeah. dialer issue, you'll know instantly. Heard. Cause people okay. have issues where like, they'll call a thousand people and they'll get five people picking up. It's like, that's a skip tracing problem, right? right. So the problem with cold calling is it's kind of like a car where if one thing's off, the whole thing's kind of screwed up. So if the drive trains messed up on a car, the whole thing ain't going to go right. Mm -hmm. if, the, the ignition valve's not working. It's, if there's no gas, it's not going to go. It's like, what's the issue, right? I kind of like separating it because I know exactly what the issue is. Right. Okay. Because a lot of people come to me with a car and they're like, the engine's smoking up. <laughs> what's the issue? It's like, I, I got to, let's kind of go through every part and see. Um, so with people's problems with cold calling, it comes first from the data. Mm -hmm. Then it comes from the skip tracing. Then from the phone numbers and the dialer. And then it's from the person's script. And so you just, I kind of have to see which part of the cold calling is the issue. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's kind of hard to, if you listen to what I have to say, it's really hard to screw all that up. Um, and so as long as you're getting a good contact rate, I, I mean, bare minimum has to be above 10%, right? Right. 20% uh, is really good for hand dialing or anything above that. Um, but there is a push and a pull though, right? Cause then you're going to pay a lot of money on skip tracing. Um, so you got to get a good, a good percentage of it. But if, as long as you're over 15, I'd say you're, you're in the green uh, for cold calling for, and then if you're getting in front of 15% of people that they're actually the owner of the house, like that's as good as a list you're going to get. Okay. 20% uh, is great too. So yeah. Okay. Sweet. Bet that. Awesome, Zach. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right. Keep it up. Yes, sir. It's more deals. All right. So, uh, hello. Hey, Zach. How you doing? I'm blessed, man. How are you? We've talked before, right? Uh yeah, we talked before, maybe like two times, I believe. Okay. How's it going, man? Give me an update. What uh, yeah, so I actually got the deal locked up on a contract since February 6th, and I've been trying my best to find some cash buyers, and it's been a pretty rough ride. The market has been uh, pretty cold. So I'm talking to you today to see if we could possibly come up with some ideas to get a cash buyer for this deal of mine. Okay, where's it locked up at? Uh, it is in Weed, California. That's like really way up north in California. Okay, what what's the city called again? Uh, w E E D. Oh, we. Oh, that's a fun name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, Weed, California. So population two thousand. Let's see where the. Okay, so the county. the population here okay i mean it's a smaller county um is it a good deal it's a decent deal i have locked up on a contract at 300k it estimated to retail over 450k that's the number that we got okay all right i mean there's, the problem here this area is you're not going to be a lot of buyers you probably know that though yeah so that's going to be the main issue here. So it's it's ultimately up to you. like so. Have you tried talk to some buyers? Oh uh, yeah, I have. I spoke with all the cash sales personally. Cold call them. I spoke to realtors in that county. I spoke to um, wholesalers around that region too, and um, this you know I still haven't closed the uh, the deal. Okay, so how many cash sales have you talked to? I believe there was, so the population is around 2,000. I believe there was only about 
near 200 cash sales. So I did talk to all of those people. I went up a little bit north too, because there's a small town called Wairika that is around there, about 2,000 population too. So I thought that since it's still in the county that people, they might be interested in it. So I've been calling around like north, um, a bit of west, a bit of east. Okay. Have you done the whole county for cash sales? Um, not not the whole county, but especially the, the, the city. Well, the population that small, man, you're going to have to do the whole county for the past year. Yeah. And okay, then on sure. top of that, too, uh, you're going to have to do some posts in Facebook groups that we teach in freelancing.com. Mm -hmm. I'd be doing that. And then on top of that, too, I'd probably call cash sales on the MLS and cold call the realtors who are the buyer's agents. Okay. Yep. Tough area, man. So you're going to have to kind of do it all. So I would say yeah. Facebook posts, cash sales for the county. And then on top of that too, uh, real, I would talk to buyer, cash buyer realtors. Yeah. That's what I would say, man. Uh, that's the best plan I'd give you right now for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just that uh, the contract inspection clause, it ends around March 6th. So I'm running out of time. And this is the first property I have on the contract. So I'm very eager to get it pushed up. But it's been a pretty rough ride. But, you know, a lot of experience, a lot of learning. And yeah, off, uh, and you went against my rules for properties that are good for wholesaling. And so, yeah. you, <laughs> so you don't yeah. go, you're going off the rules, man. You, it's, it's not going to go well, man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay. trying to help you out here, but it, it's against what I say. So that's why you're struggling with it. Yeah, it's been a really rough ride, but you know, still got a, still got a good chance. Okay, thank you, Zach. Is this a Fisbo? Uh, no, nope, it's a off market. <clears throat> they got okay. the uh, property donated to them, and then they actually reached out to me on my Craigslist ad because huh. usually I'm more. My market is around 95,000 people. So yeah. they actually really went more. So they actually reached out to me. They were really motivated. The price was motivated. So I decided to lock it up on the contract and see what we could do with it. And it was my first deal too. So yeah, I was very, uh, very excited, very eager. And they were really motivated too. So Okay. Well, uh, let's do that plan and, and see what we can do to get, sell, that pay, sell that deal. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Appreciate right. it. Awesome. Awesome. And then next year we got uh, Tyrese. What's up, man? How are you doing, Zach? Good. You're the guy that got that deal, right? Yeah. Sorry for spamming the chat. First, I want to thank you and your dad. I just found your channel like a couple months ago, and um, like I'm just getting started. You guys are awesome. I actually joined like a local wholesaling group, and everybody in the group swears by you guys. So like your reach is it's out there. So I want to awesome, say thank man. you. But um, yeah. At? um it was this is a group i found on facebook actually it was a, a guy on youtube he only had like 200 views it just came up like on the algorithm under, under your videos and um i went ahead and joined his facebook group and the, like i said everybody's like zach and rick zach and rick zach and rick so cool. that, that's what's up guy congratulations thanks so man. i um i just got this deal this guy that i was talking about uh you guys i don't know if you've talked about this a lot but it's pay per lease so i looked into it and long story short i got a free trial got a, a lead I, I don't know how you feel about it, but long story short, I, I called the lead, whatever, the guy motivated, whatever. I'm over in Pennsylvania, and he's like a couple hours out of my county. And obviously, my county follows your rules. Population over 100,000, me and home price under 450,000. This dude's way out in the boondocks. Long story short, contract was uh, agreed to for $10,000. I called around to, and I, I've seen a lot of guys you in your, uh, I did, yep. So okay. the thing is, 10,000 bucks, and I, I want flip with plus, I just don't have the money to drop on it right now. So that's why my first, I told my mom, I wanted, I wanted JV with you guys for it, but I called around to, um, what I did for cash bars, I called around to realtors, like you suggested, and also property management guys. I don't know if people aren't trying that, but you've suggested that in video before. So I called and property management guys are awesome for me. They hooked me up with four cash buyers. These guys were all basically saying, hey, it's like a small area where all the, the slum lords, I got that definition from you. They're the slum lords of the area and they're they're yep. ready to buy it like sharks with things. They're like, oh, we'll, uh, we'll JV with you. And they're just trying to screw me out the deal. And I was like, if I can JV with the guy who taught me all this stuff, Zach, that'd be awesome. But the thing is, like you said, it's not in a great market. And um, I don't want it to be a hassle and your your reps laughed me out of the email. So that's why I'm, I'm not going to laugh. Yeah. What's, what's the county? Um, It's over in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. 
So Uniontown's a real small place over in PA. I've never been around there. It's like an hour outside of Pittsburgh, I believe. But so the guy already moved out, house is vacant. I agreed to contract for 10,000. I called Realtors and as I well know from watching your videos, dude, Realtors are all pie in the sky. They're like, oh, we can get 40,000, 50,000 and it's gonna sit up there for 300, 400 days. So I don't wanna do that. But um, I talked to a, a slumlord and he basically straight up said, hey, I would probably pay 18,000 for this right now. And he said, that's probably the most anybody in the area would pay 18,000. I have it under contract for 10. So again, that's why I wanted to do offer it. The like, guy's like, gonna give you 18, just go with that. Make eight grand. That, well, the thing is, he he wanted to do 18, but the thing is, that's when he was talking about, well, we have the JV because then this, this, and that. And he sent me over a contract. I can show it to you. But he, the fine print, the devil was in the details. He was just trying to screw me out of it. I'm I'm no idiot. Yeah, no, so it, that's what. I, here's the fun part about the guys like that. Here's an assignment of contract. Mm -hmm. It's not valid until you send three thousand dollars non-refundable EMD to the title company. And that's what I would say to them. Yeah. And you can okay. use my assignment of contract, not their written one where it has these crazy loopholes to screw you. Yeah. Mine's pretty locked in. You, it's the one I use. So you can't. That, screw I, I have yours. Actually. I just got, well, I got yours on freehosting.com and you yeah. guys sent over a nice email and I sent it over to my brother so he could, you know, just take rid of whatever parts. Yeah. A question is, do you know how we get that to DocuSign? Is that a pretty straightforward process? Just converting your contract over just, DocuSign? Um, file, export, PDF, Got and upload Got DocuSign. Okay. But, so do you think it's even worth me going to sell my paper on this deal? Because like I said, I want flip work for us. Like you guys give me I a would, man, but like I don't want to split a deal. Like I don't want to split eight, nine grand if you can just get yeah. yourself. I got you. I got I don't you. Need the, I don't, point, I I don't need the money, bro. Free. You need the money more than me. So I got it. I, if you're going to make eight or nine grand yourself, go do it. I got it. Uh, Try to see that guy seems like it was a screw though, so I'd be careful there. It was weird the wording on it because he basically said that they have to make no less than three thousand. Then they listed with the realtor, so you have to pay the realtor fees. And then the contract said you'll get what's left. And I was like, so what's left? Oh, pocket, yeah, yeah. pocket, pocket, land at fifty cents. And he said, oh no, we won't do that. So I told him, I said, I'm not signing that. You know what I mean? But that's Smith why I'm glad deal? I got to catch you. Submit the deal. They might say no. And if okay. they say no, I, I probably won't do it. Yeah. Um, but submit it until I sign the JV with you. It's your uh -huh. deal. So like, I got you. So try to do the bo best of both worlds. Yeah, I, I want to submit it with you because, like I said, you've helped me out more than you even know. Is it a Quick vacant point. house? Huh? Is it, it is. Vacant? Yep, he's already out. I was on the phone with the seller just half an hour ago. You have so access actually, to the property? Say again? You have access to the property? He does have a cousin up in the area, and I told him, like you always say, so we do it one time, don't want to waste your time, don't want to waste my time. And he was cool with that. He went for all of it. So I said, hey, if I go up, it's going to be one time. So I haven't pulled that card to go up there and see it yet but he does have a cousin in the area to, to show you need to it that realtor that said 40 grand he tried he's probably wanting to list it right yeah that's that's what he wanted to list it but then i found a slumlord who straight up said they'd jv but then it just sounded like they were trying to screw me out all my money and he wanted the deal but yeah. um on that point i will take your advice thank you so much i'll post that to uh sell my paper i want to ask last quick question so your dad um he's all big into probates shout out to rick he's awesome I'm I, too. <laughs> big, so awesome. So what I'm doing right now is I don't know if you know who Alex Ramosi is. I know your dad mentioned him in the video, but he he's just all about one, like focus on one thing. So right now I'm focused on probates and um it's actually had good success for me. I've pulled basically all the probates in my county. I know when I watch your pro video, you're lucky because yours they says the PR, the rep, and the real estate like address all in the same document. I have to go skip trace. And I have to go cyber background check the property appraiser. I have to do all the work, but I, I'm doing it. So I have a pretty good list of probates. And I actually called the first one I called today. He was like, all right, like, yeah, I want to sell on that work right now. Call me back. But I was going to ask you, so um, typically when I cold call them, I'm just cold calling them with the MCPT, Ford, and everything else you've taught. Is there, should I approach it different because it is a probate or is it the same like way you would call FISBO? So if you go through the cold calling margins for .com, when we talk about probates, it's very, it's very weird how we do it. Yeah, but I, I call them pretending like I don't know it's a probate. That's what I was doing. I was like, so "Oh, is that?" Because they're always like, "How'd you get this?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm using this software. Did this get left to you?" And they're like, "Oh, yeah, exactly what happened." So that's what I'm. I, I don't with. say did it get left to you. I just okay, say, that, are, that, "Are you the okay. owner of the house, and you're looking to sell okay. it?" My gotcha. partner gave me a list of properties that we're looking to buy, uh -huh. and they meet our criteria. Wait, I got gotcha. you. Not the owner. What happened? Oh, gee, I'm sorry to hear that. Right. So it's sorry about that. I don't want to button your. Are, are you looking to sell it? Or are you not? Right. Oh, it's an appropriate. Well, we bought a house as a probate. Yeah. Just... And I, I've taken that from your dad and you because I said that to a guy today because he's like, oh, I can't sell in probate. And I was like, actually, if you want to go ahead and get this deal done, I can help you sell in probate. And then he was all for it. He, you know, left me his name, number, email, and everything else. But so last question is for the probate thing. 
Um, I don't have, I just use Google Voice. I don't have like a dial and SMS yet. Um, but is there a, a text template? Because I was reading over you and your dad's probate letter template. I'm not going to start direct mail yet, but is it appropriate to just kind of take the text from that that letter and put that in a, a literal text message? You know what I mean? To send over? Because some of them just can't. No, voice. just don't, to write don't. our just to the free texting strips you have in freelancing.com. I got you. Okay. Simple the better, man. Thank you, man. Hey, you've been awesome. Like I said, shout out to you and your dad. You guys are doing awesome. Uh, All right. I'm going to send that over to sell my paper. And if it, if it works, I'd, I'd love to get Flip with Rick Plus. All right. Get a deal, have man. Have a day, man. You too. Boom. Shout out to Tyrese there. He's got a good attitude. He's got to get the work and he's putting the work. So uh, let's get it, guys. Also, FYI, my opinion on PPL, paper lead, not a fan of it at all. Um, just don't recommend it when, when I kind of look at Everything out else there, probably not. It's PPC with extra steps. Uh, so not a big fan. There are people that love it, right? Um, for most people, I would say it's a no for me, but I know people doing well with it. So uh, up to you. But guys, got any value from this video, do me a favor. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe. If you want to learn wholesaling real estate for free, go to frillson.com. I'll see you soon, guys.